This is an RX 480. Uh, this card's several years old. Yeah, several years old. But uh, can it still game in 2022? All right, the short answer I'm going to give you to that is yes. And I'm, we're going to show you some benchmarks in a little bit to kind of back that up. But this card has not been in my possession until recently for better part of two years. I, I lent it out to my friend Amy to put in her build when she was going to run two monitors. And I did not have her computer set up for that. That was sort of a last minute surprise. So um, I let her borrow this card thinking that we would be able to make those adjustments relatively quick. Relatively quickly? Um, yeah, I'm really going to enjoy English when I learn it. Um, I figured that I would get it back pretty quickly. That did not happen. It's been quite a while. COVID hit, all this other stuff. Anyway, it has uh, been returned to my possession. So I thought that what I would do is I would take this card. I would go ahead and test it to see what it was like in the original condition it was. Benchmark everything. Then clean it up and repaste it then benchmark it, and then go ahead and put a BIOS on it of on RX 580, which essentially they're the same card. Um, the memory overclock, there was some memory uplift and, and some other things, but essentially the RX 500 series and 400 series, they were very, very much the same hardware. It was just a matter of the software and the firmware being updated. So that would be the next step. Uh, we kind of didn't get that far because when I plugged it in and I went to go run the first benchmark, I thought, okay, here we go. No. Um, yeah, she immediately overheated. And now I, I tried a couple of different times to make sure, and in a couple of different systems, I'm, I'm just showing the one here, but, and it did, sometimes it would shut the computer completely down and sometimes it would go ahead and, and shut the, the video down, but the fans would ramp up to hundred percent. So, um, Testing it in two different systems, and with those symptoms, I was pretty sure that it was, in fact, overheating. The thermal paste was probably dried up, and we were able to go back and kind of do that. Cleaned everything up. Yes, it was, and uh, the thermal paste was in pretty bad shape. No fault of anybody's. It's an older card. It's been going for a while. If it was a constant gaming card, we would have noticed this sooner, but because it's not, because it was just regular uh, office duties and stuff like that, um, there was no way of, of being able to tell that until we actually got to a point where we were putting it under a heavy load. And when we did, um, she, she crapped all over herself. So <laughs> it didn't work out that well. Now, some good, really, really good things about this card. Um, it, and we'll, we'll get to the, the, the numbers in a minute because I know you, probably, you guys probably want to see that. This is still solid. This is an FX, X, FX card. It's an RX 480. It is one of those models that you can actually take the fans out. So you can swap them. These happen to be white LEDs, but you can swap them with the blue ones or the red ones. I'm, I'm sure somewhere on eBay or somewhere on Amazon or somewhere out there in the ether, uh, you can still get those. But uh, it makes it really, really easy to, to clean the fans. It makes it easy to you know, clean the fins underneath without having to take everything apart. And they just, I mean, quite seriously, just they snap right back in. No stress at all. So um, that that's a really good feature. The The other part that I really liked about this card, one of the things that makes my favorite, well, actually there's a few, but one of them is it has eight gig of VRAM, which is far more than, you know, a lot of these other, even a 1060 only came with a max of six. Uh, and you would think, oh, well, you know, it's only a little bit of a difference, but there, there is a noticeable difference in some newer titles, especially try running Far Cry 6 on something that only has four gig of VRAM. It, it struggles. It doesn't, doesn't really do it very well. And that's just, I mean, that's a recent title. They're only going to get more demanding as we go. Uh, one of the other things I like is the inputs. There's five different outputs on the uh, outputs. Yeah, inputs, outputs. There's five different outputs on the back of here. Three of them display port, one HDMI, and a DVI, So, which is a digital out. Um, so that in itself is pretty cool because I've got, uh, I've got display ports running to all three of these monitors. Now... All three of the monitors I'm using in front of me, they're all running at 1440, which is their max resolution. I don't have any 4K monitors. They're running off an RTX 2070. If I did it with this card, I would have to stick to 1080. There's no way it could handle the load of 1440. But that doesn't mean that it can't play games on a single monitor at 1440. And it actually does that pretty well. So the test setup we're using for this is the ASRock B550 
uh, Steel Legend motherboard. I ran it with 16 gig of Crucial Ballistics memory running at 3000. Uh, of course, this card, uh, I went ahead and it's running off just a regular SSD, 2.5 inch SSD, but all the games are running off that external hard drive that's an SSD. So there's no issues with any kind of lag or anything like that there. When we go through our whole list of, of regular games, and I, we will get to one thing in, in particular in just a few minutes that kind of surprised me. But we, we go ahead and start like we always do with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And uh, this actually, I'm, I'm going to show 1440 and 1080 on the same slides here. I'm not going to compare this to anything else except for itself at 1080 and 1440. Uh, at 1440, 47 frames per second is not bad. And I, I should be keeping up with the 1% and the 0.1% lows. But there was, there was no stuttering, no problems, no issues that I, that I found when I was doing this. Uh, now, at the extreme or the very high settings or ultimate settings, yes, there was there was noticeable. But this, it was running fairly smooth. 47 frames per second and high on 1440 and 70 frames per second on 1080p high, which is, you know, you're hitting that magic 60 frames per second number. So, uh, yeah, it turns out very, very well. 1080p, very, very capable. And you could probably even run it at 1440p. Borderlands 3, it's another one of those circumstances where, you know, it's not going to run that great at 1440, only 35 frames per second, and you figure the older consoles when this game came out were running at 30 frames per second, still pretty decent, still pretty smooth. Uh, on 1080p, it was 49, but if you step that down to medium, you immediately pushed over the 60 frames per second and got 76, so very, very good, and that was very smooth, that's 76. Also, uh, the one thing I did notice after repasting and everything, it, it stayed pretty cool even with a game that stresses the GPU sometimes like Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands 3, typically my the, a GPU, whichever one I'm testing or using, I can almost guarantee it's going to hit 73, 74, 75 degrees. It, it stayed really, really cool. It didn't, I don't think it hit more than 70 or 71. So it was, it was, now that's not to say that other games didn't push it up a little bit, but in Borderlands, I was pretty surprised that it stayed fairly cool. Far Cry 6, we're replacing Far Cry 5 with Far Cry 6. Like I said, it's a more demanding title. It's a little bit newer. Uh, for 1440 high, we were running in the 40s. And for 1080p, we we're hitting that magic 60 again. 61 frames per second and 1080p medium. Uh, 1080p high, excuse me. So very, very playable. It looked pretty good. And the 8 gig of VRAM really, really helped this card. Uh, whereas the 6400 I was testing struggled to even run uh, that game or the benchmarks or anything, this card has no problem with it. None at all. For World War Z, we went ahead and checked that uh, 1440p, 67 frames per second, and 1080p at high, 100 frames per second. Very, very playable, very good. Uh, no problems, no glitches, no no issues. And again, uh, this ran just a little bit warmer. It, it did, and I don't know why, it ran it up in about 72, 73 degrees, but that's okay, it's perfectly fine. And for, you know, for this card, uh, now when I was running this and it did get a little bit warmer and we'll talk a little about it, but uh, the fans, when they did kick in, yeah, you could hear them a little bit. It is a little bit louder than some of the other video cards I have, but still uh, not so loud that if I'm playing with headphones on that I would notice. Horizon Zero Dawn, this one's usually the great equalizer, and no matter what test I, go, I have going on, this was always the one that makes me scratch my head and just go, what? But this time, it, it, it ran right along with everything else. Uh, it was 37 frames per second, 1440p, favored quality instead of high. And then at 1080p, we ran 53, but if you run back to original or you put it on the medium setting, 64 frames per second. So very... Uh, that, very playable. I've said that a couple times before. It really, it looked really good. Uh, I didn't have any kind of issues with, with textures popping in. Did a little bit when I was running 1440p on the extreme or the, the very high settings. Uh, sometimes that would have a little bit, but that only did the first bench, the benchmark test. And I'm sure it was just loading up all the shaders and everything. 1080p ran very smooth, looked very good and still very playable. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another one of those games that looks beautiful, and it's a, a new one on this list, or fairly new one on this list. 51 frames per second and 1440p high, and 62 frames per second and 1080p high. So again, we're hitting that 60 frames per second, looking very, very good.
Now, because this is an AMD card, it is an older card, I thought, okay, uh, let's try some something with FSR. So I went ahead and I did Cyberpunk, and I ran through the original test the first time, getting 1440p, I think it was 39, uh, 38 looks like. Yeah, 38 on 10, yeah, I'm cheating, so what? Uh, 1440p on high is 38, and then on 1080p high is 52, but medium is 62. So that's very playable, and I thought, okay, maybe FSR will do something to this. Uh, it, yeah, it did, as a matter of fact. Uh, when I was doing the original testing, because I wasn't paying attention when I was changing the settings, that when I was changing from ultra to high to medium and so on, that it was automatically changing my FSR settings to match. And I thought that was very interesting that it would do that, but I also thought that was pretty convenient that it would automatically take that into account and do that for me. So that, that in itself was pretty cool. And it was something that I, I did not go back and test separately because by then I was already you know too far invested in into keeping up with all the benchmarks. But at least on Cyberpunk, and I'm sure maybe on one or two other games, uh, it automatically does take advantage of S FSR the uh, fidelity super resolution from amd uh, it does automatically take advantage of that when you're changing your default settings for the video and the last one we have in here is our esports title csgo where we're getting 185 on 1440p high and we're getting over 250 on uh, 1080p high so uh, very very i mean I, I don't want to keep saying it's playable, but it was, and it looked good, and it ran smooth, and I didn't have any issues. I did not have near the issues I thought I would have with this card trying to run newer titles, uh, especially stuff like Far Cry 6 and Valhalla and a, a few others in between and Cyberpunk and all that stuff. It handled it pretty well, and even though Cyberpunk was a little bit lower frames per second, uh, with the addition of FSR, uh, it actually, I mean, it smoothed it out and made it very playable. And it looked good. One of the things I'm going to do in the future, one of the next steps for this, is going ahead and doing a full set of benchmarks with the 11400F that I've got in the Intel system. And we're going to go ahead and try that. Now, this, when I was testing with the uh, 5600, these numbers look very similar to the numbers for the 11400F with a 6400 in it. Now, I have not tested the RX 6400 with a uh, Ryzen 5 5600, but now I've got all the benchmarks for this, so I can go back and kind of compare. But this did compare quite a bit in numbers and very close to the setup that had the 11400 with that 6400 video card. And so I'm curious to see what this will look like with that Intel processor, that 11400. After that, I'll probably try to put the new BIOS on here, the RX 580 BIOS, to see if that makes a difference. And then run those whole set of tests again. I'm thinking because the memory clock speed will be a little bit more, then it'll probably be just a little bit higher, but I'm almost afraid to mess with it because this runs very, very solid now. And especially at 1080p, it's a great card. It still looks beautiful. I mean, uh, it's still, I mean, the back plate is awesome looking and it still has plenty of outputs that I can use. All the, all the outputs that I was testing, they seem to still work. Fans are interchangeable and all that. There's a lot of good features about this this card that I really, really like. So I don't know if I want to take a chance on breaking it by being stupid. But I'm probably going to take a chance on breaking it because I'm stupid. So there is that. But anyway, that's what I've got for this time. I just thought you guys might like to know that I finally did get one of my favorite video cards in the whole world back in my possession. I was able to go ahead and test it, clean it up, test it. Wanted to test it before and after the cleanup. Well, we effectively know that there's a 100% better, uh, there's a 100% improvement in performance from the cleanup to the uh, to the after, so that's a good thing. But um, overall, very solid. It will still play games in 2022. It'll still play current AAA titles in 2022. It will still reach 60 frames per second in those current titles in 2022. So that's a good sign, and that's uh, that's definitely something worth keeping in mind if. When the, uh, as the GPU market cr comes crashing down, I imagine these cards are going to, uh, they'll end up being the RX 480s or 580s. They've got to be under 100 bucks, $80, $90, something like that. You will be able to find a decent one. Um, th they're out there. They got to be out there. And I'm sure that there's going to be a bunch of GPUs getting unloaded. And those, I don't know, uh, we might see these drop to like 70 bucks, you know, 65 or 70. So keep your eyes open, see what happens. If you're still rocking one of these RX 480s or even a RX 580, 
let me know. Uh, let me know if you got the 4 gig version or the 8 gig version. Let me know what kind of games you're playing on it. Let me know if you still like it. Because I, I got it back in my possession and I like it. I still like it. It's awesome. Uh, don't forget to do all those YouTube things. Go ahead and subscribe, like, all that, you know, hit that bell notification icon, whatever, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, and I'm going to leave you with one other thing like I do at the end of every video. Just be nice to somebody. Just have a good day. Be nice to each other. Somebody's going to be nice back to you. It's always a good feeling when somebody does that. And um, really, that m some uh, there's a lot of other things I got going on. Uh, Dustin's build is coming up. Uh, I've got a, a build for another friend, Jeff. I'm going to be setting up my gaming computer and all that stuff. Or I, guess, I guess I should say gaming setup, uh, soundbar, TV, consoles, PC, and all that stuff in the living room before too long. Uh, I'm going to be swapping out the processor in this rig uh, pretty soon here. That's going to be... <laughs> yeah 5800x yeah so it's going to replace that 3700x and i'm looking forward to it but all that's coming up and it will keep me busy and so i'm going to have yeah it's going to be kind of crazy it's going to be a crazy fall folks uh, also we've got nvidia amd intel doing a lot of launches so i'm sure there will be a lot of information shared on that as well don't forget to to be good to somebody be nice to somebody just do some random nice thing you know somebody will appreciate it and until the next time, I'll see you later.